The Utes land another four-star recruit, and Utah Gymnastics gets underway with the Red Rocks preview. We're talking about it on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We greatly appreciate it. Appreciate all of you who are interacting with us on YouTube as well. We had our been with some of our best weeks have come most recently on the YouTube channel, so appreciate you guys liking and subscribing, as well as would love to hear you guys in the comments, as well as on social media. You can follow the show at Locked On Utes or me at JT Wistersill. Speaking of today's show, we're going to be diving into Hunter Clegg coming to Utah. The Utes able to steal him away from Stanford, another high-profile recruit, and Utah Gymnastics getting underway with the Red Rocks preview. And in order to help us break all that down our friend sammy moore from ute zone is here to help us out and sammy you know you look at last week and it's like how can it get any better for the utes you get both the fanos and it's like you're just on cloud nine already especially because you beat out people for uh spencer fano like a clemson like an oregon like a michigan like just all these schools where it's like feels like he's heading there and you're able to keep such a high profile recruit in state just unbelievable and then you get a guy like hunter clegg who seemed locked into stanford whenever a coach leaves like a david shaw left and coach and look some players do commit to programs but most players from what i've seen commit to coaches especially because it's coaches who sell them on the vision and especially Stanford being in the position they were being in once David stepped away from the team, still not having a head coach. You got Jason Garrett, who actually closed last week's show with talking about like, I think he might be a decent hire. He's just like, no, nah, I'm good with NBC. I'm going to stay on TV for that. Basically, he goes back. So Stanford in disarray and Clegg comes to the Utes. And when you talk about Hunter Clegg, you're getting a guy who's got good length of the defensive end position, good strength too. He's a guy who's just doubled or triple teamed a lot. So maybe the sack numbers won't blow you away like some of the other edge defenders in the state, but he's a guy that's going to come in and contribute for this team. I don't know how much in year one, year one it's always hard but after that i think the sky's the limit for this guy and i think he's going to be getting a lot of sacks in utah as he's been over the course of his career yeah it's a it's a big get for utah um i know a lot of people were like before he even initially committed to stanford it was kind of like utah was kind of at times the 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 leader for him i want to say um but his recruitment was just it was it was an interesting one to follow um because at times it looked like he was all in on Utah and then it switched to Stanford and then it switched back to Utah. It was, it was a back and forth kind of recruitment mm-hmm. thing with him. Um, but I think we all saw the writing on the wall that he wasn't going to stay committed to Stanford a couple weeks ago when he took yeah. his official visit to UCLA. Um, yeah. Cause a lot of guys, when they're committed to a program, 110%, you don't see them taking yeah. <laughs> visits, but some guys do take visits. And like, I always say like, if, a, if you see a kid taking a, an official visit to another program, like it's not immediately a, a, a cause to worry. Like it's it, like, you can still be like, Oh, like a little concerned, but at the same time, like yeah. you shouldn't be like, be like, Oh, like the sky's mm-hmm. falling to this situation because kids are going to take these trips. They're paid for by universities. Sometimes they've never been to these, <laughs> they've never been to these States before. Mm-hmm. They've never done things like this. So they want to get those experiences and see these facilities and see these things. Yeah. So um, I'm not surprised that it like happened. Um, I think it was kind of a sooner rather than later situation that he did like decommit from Stanford. Um, I was like hoping that he would commit to Utah and obviously, yeah. obviously he did, <laughs> but, um, it's, it's an interesting one to follow. And then, you know, just like as a whole recruiting last week was like insane because you get, Obviously, you get Clegg, you get Spencer Fano, then Logan Fano, you get his brother, who was, like, in the portal. So, mm, it was a star. it was a big week. Yeah. Um, and then even right before the championship game, you got Mikey Matthews to commit mm-hmm. to Utah, the three-star yeah. wide receiver out of California. So, Utah's on the upswing for recruiting right now, and oh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a very, very, very good thing. Um, there's been talk of the Rose Bowl recruiting bump. Um, you know, like once you make it to a Rose Bowl, your your recruiting goes Rose up and Bowl, stuff like that. Champs, yep. mm-hmm. You didn't see much of a recruiting bump last site at this time last year mm-hmm. when Utah won the Pac-12 championship and was headed to a Rose Bowl. But I think more kids are on notice now that Utah has done it twice. Yes. Back to back. And I think the the nature in which they did beat USC really helped it. Yeah. Um, Because especially a lot of these kids that are committing 
to Utah are are in a lot of those position groups that um had big games against USC. Because mm-hmm. if you look at if you look at Spencer Fawn, like that offensive line for Utah, like Keaton Bills was just moving people left and right. You had a good offensive line that kept Cam protected. Your your offensive line was opening holes for your running back. So it was a it was a good offensive line yeah. game. But then if you look at Logan Fano and Hunter Clegg, you have defensive ends. And who is making good who is making good plays? Connor O'Toole. I know. Mickey Sugataranga. Like you have a lot of those guys that are in those positions that are making those big plays. And I think that's what sought what those kids see, see the most is their position that they play getting those big plays and yep. getting those big moments. And I think that's a big that's a big thing. And Utah's Utah's on a on a on a tear right now on the recruiting trail. And I think that um I said this on another podcast, but hold on to your butts is how I'm aptly phrasing coming down the stretch for signing day on the twenty first of December. Yeah. Um today. Yeah, because I just don't think there's a I think there's there's going to be a lot more things that happen well, for Utah. Well, you mentioned one of them we're going to touch on a little later in the show is, is Smith Snowden, the top corner in Utah. His feet kind of hanging in the air a little bit. But um, speaking of top corner in Utah, I mean, you just look at the top players in the state of Utah, basically. I'm looking at guys like I guess Tassili Akana is someone, the Skyridge defensive end. He has yet to commit. But for top five players in the state, when you get Spencer Fano, when you get Hunter Clegg, by the time you were listening to this show, Utah very well may have added Smith Snowden then too. You let's see Sarah. He goes to BYU, but that wasn't surprising. But like all of these talented players in state picking Utah is so monumental because this state is loaded with really talented high school football players. And it's huge that the Utes are able to add these guys in these positions. And it is just an unbelievable time and moment for this program right now to really feel like they are able to capitalize on these things and put set, put themselves in this position to be successful. You mentioned last year, you didn't see quite the same recruiting bump, but I felt like Utah fans, it was already a win because you got Lander Barton, who yeah. was everything we hoped he'd be in his first year as the Pac-12 defensive freshman. He already committed after Harbaugh had flew out to see him. Mm-hmm. I was at that game that Harbaugh was at. I was standing next to him on the sideline <laughs> at Brighton. But I yeah, that was another point. Like, yeah, Utah did get a lot of the local prospects last year, but um the two big ones were Lander Barton and Carson Tabarachi. And yeah, Tabarachi's not even here with Utah yeah. anymore. He transferred out after spring ball and he's at USC now. So um this it's it's a big win. It's always a big win when you can keep local prospects here and going to your school you're always there's always going to be one or two guys that slips that that you can't get because they want to get out of the state they want to go experience new things which is totally fine that is Mm -hmm. their prerogative they can do what they want but to be closing out like three to like two or three of your top five players in the state like to come to your school is like incredible huge it's major and especially because Coaches are fine. High school or like college coaches are finally taking note that Utah, the state of Utah as a whole in the high yeah. school football realm has some really, really, really good talent. So that's why you're seeing a lot of these kids getting these offers from like Michigan or Ohio State or like those big programs because they're finally noticing what the state of Utah has because Kyle Whittingham's getting a lot of those local kids and putting them in his program and developing them into NFL talent. And those coaches are like, he came from Utah. I guess we yeah. need to get out there and go watch some high school football there. So that's like, that's part of it too. I think is there was, there's this thing called the, the Utah bat signal when yeah. Utah offers a kid, then all of the other schools just converge. Yeah. So and one. it, that's been, that's been, a, that's been a trend for a long time, but I think even now more than ever that Utah bat signal is like hot and heavy at times. Mm. No, you're 100% right. And just because of what also you talked about, this is not a fluke. When any of you do things two years in a row like that, and yes, they had a lot of returning starters, but you just look at how the season started for them defensively, where they're the ones who missed 27 tackles. And then, of course, USC goes on to do that in the championship game to be able to then get back to that point and be able to repeat as Pac-12 champs when everything didn't seem in your favor. It is incredible, and it's a testament to this program. And you mentioned just the development, too. Connor O'Toole was catching passes two years last year. Now, this year, he's getting after quarterbacks, so he his entire life had been 
been playing receiver and then kind of comes back and plays defensive end. And now you look at if you're a guy like Hunter Clegg, like if they can turn a guy around that quickly and all the credit in the world to Connor for buying in and working hard, but it is extremely difficult to learn a new position. So guys like Hunter coming in in terms of fundamentals, technique, understanding of all that already have a head up on him. So you know those guys are excited to get in and work with these coaching staff regardless of where their positions are. And it's why you got to be fired up about Utah recruiting. And we're going to come back and touch on again a huge recruit in the state of Utah in Smith Snowden. If we think he's going to commit to Utah, he's going to be doing it on Monday in a second. And we're also going to come back and talk about some Red Rocks with Utah Gymnastics finally getting back into the fold a little bit. Gave us a little bit of tease last Friday night. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at Omaha Steaks. Guys, the holidays are here. Achieving gifting greatness when you give the perfect gift of an aged, tender, and delicious Omaha Steak. The steak experts at Omaha Steaks have put together a special curated gift package to help take the guest's work out of gift giving and make the you a holiday hero. Go to omahasteaks.com and use code locked on. That's all caps locked on at checkout to get 30% off your order. What's better than the gift of a juicy, tender steak from Omaha? It can be so hard to know what you want to get the people and family members in your life. So give them something they're going to love because who doesn't like a steak? Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence, knowing that you're ordering the very best. OmahaSteaks.com. Use promo code Locked On at checkout. Once again, one word, Locked On, all caps, at checkout to get the extra 30% off your order. Make sure you guys head over to Omaha Steaks and cash in on this great offer today. Omaha Steaks is everything you need to give the gift. That's simply perfect. So make sure you guys head over and give the gift of Omaha Steaks. Sammy, I think one thing Utah fans are really excited about is Utah Gymnastics being back. The Red Rocks were in action with their official preview on Friday. We don't get to see them in an official meet action for a while now, but it was so great to see them back up at the Huntsman. And even though the meet wasn't scored, you could just feel that energy it really felt like because I know you were there and you've been speaking to just this atmosphere that Red Rock seems to bring in. And we know how well attended it is too. It's great to see the fan base supported as well. And there was even a great NIL opportunity going on for the gymnastics girls as well. So just a fantastic night to have Utah Gymnastics back. Of course. And um I want to first talk about the NIL thing. Um great. each girl had their own Leotard they designed um mm -hmm. for the meet. So like Grace McCallum, for example, she's one of Utah's Olympians. Hers had Japanese cherry blossoms to kind of represent yeah. her being at the Tokyo Olympics. Um it was it was a really cool thing to like see all of these girls have their personalities out in a Leo um that you can go and buy yeah. for if you have a little gymnast in your life like that loves the Red Rocks. Go buy her a leotard. They're available. Go support these girls. Um, Utah Gymnastics is has um, a collective called Who Rocks the House. It is the first like female collective that represents just one sport. Yep. And so fans, it's like a philanthro fan is what they call it, mm. is fans that want to support these girls 100%. And it's it's really great. Like Tom Farden yep. mentioned post meet that Jill Hoffman, um, one of the gymnasts, she's using all of her NIL money to go get her nursing degree once she finishes cool. her degree at Utah. Like that's, that's great that these fans are helping these girls Amazing. like further their lives and further their careers because there's no professional gymnastics. Like you can yeah. try and go to the Olympics, but like it's hard. It's a four year cycle. You're going to get old. You're going to get beaten out by younger girls every single time. You I rarely see a girl go to three gymnastics. I mean, even, oh, I bet even two, you rarely see a girl go to two gymnastics. Um, like, it's you incredible. So you have like Simone Biles. Yeah, Simone, has, like, but it's still rare, right? Overall, yeah, like, on you, it's like, it has, you have to be like a generational talent to yes. do multiple. And like Simone Biles was one. Um, yeah. Suni Lee, who's at Auburn currently, yes. she's already announced that this is her last season in college. Oh, wow. And that she's going to start going to focus on going to the Olympics Makes in sense. 2024 and then probably in uh, the next Olympics after that. So, yeah. Uh, but that that collective is that's so much fun. If you ever if you want to yeah. go out and support the Red Rocks, just look up Who Rocks the House NIL. Um, their collective and it should you should be able to get all the information on that um it's a great i'm 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 all for nil for players but especially for these female gymnasts and these, these yep. female athletes who probably don't get as represented as some of the male athletes so 100 sure. go and support the the who rocks the health collective but um that's a shameless plug for me on that one but <laughs> i um, think it's a great plug that's the best plug we've had but the other thing is is this meet was like as it's an unscored meet which is yep Kind of here, it's 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 we're used to it at this point, but this year it was eight girls on each event, all four events. So you got to see everybody. But I think my biggest like eye opener was McKenna Smith. She's right. a true freshman from New Mexico, and she was on fire. She looked really good. It looked like she didn't even like yep. 
miss a beat basically from the elite level to the like collegiate level um she stuck her vault she was like one of the first vault vaults of the night she just plopped that thing right in um and it was a different vault than you see a lot of girls do you usually see them do a yurchenko full or yurchenko like one and a half which Explain a full means is. a full so yurchenko full means you do one full twist mm. a yurchenko one and a half means you do a full twist plus a half of a twist okay so you'll face in different directions when you land but mckenna did a double pike so a pike is when you like kind of bend yourself in and like fold yourself like a like a tortilla yeah so i i didn't know how else to describe that so she did a double pike and she just stuck it and it was amazing um her bars routine was amazing. Her her beam routine was great. Her floor routine was great. Like Tom Farden even said post me, he's like, she's on the way to being a freshman all arounder for us, which is something you usually don't see. The last oh, time, well, you yeah. you saw it last year for Utah because you had Grace McCallum, mm -hmm. who's like an Olympian. But yeah. outside of like Olympians, like the last yeah. person to do that for Utah was Miley O'Keefe in 2019. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Wait, in 2019 oh. or 2020? One of those two. Either Whenever one. Miley's freshman year was, like Miley was the last one to do it. And Miley's a senior now. So yeah. and that tells you how long it's taken. Um, but it was honestly, it was a good meet. Um going to be interesting to see how things kind of shake out because so usually utah's first meet of the season is the best of utah meet over at rio tinto yep. that has like utah utah state byu and suu it's a quad you kind of do your thing you win this copper cup or whatever it's called utah's never lost the copper the copper cup so i don't even know why they like yeah don't like just like give it to utah permanently yeah. um but instead, Utah starting off the season at like with LSU at home, and LSU is a top ten team. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting to see, and also there's going to be a familiar face on that LSU team. Um, if you guys know who Cami Hall is, Cami was on the team, the Utah team last year. That's she, not what most people are thinking when you say LSU domestics. I know, I think you know by the way. Yeah, everyone's probably thinking about Livy Dune. Um, I think it's but that's dumb, but yeah. <laughs> not who I'm talking about. JT, I'm talking about Cami, our former Red Rock. So Cammy Hall transferred to LSU for her fifth year. Um, so she will be with the Tigers um, mm -hmm. for her final season. Her. So, yeah, it's good. Um, she's going because the coaching staff over at LSU is is Garrett Griffith and Courtney McCool Griffith, who Utah actually Fox? coached at Utah a couple of years ago. And when they were at Utah, Cammy was at her most successful. And so yeah. I think she went back. She went to LSU to be with coaches that knew how to how to coach her. I want to say. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, you have some new faces. Obviously, I mentioned McKenna Smith. You have Sarah Crump, who we didn't get to see, um, but she is a freshman from Las Vegas slash here. She grew up here, and then she moved yeah. to Las Vegas. Um, and then you have a very, very important transfer is Abby Brenner. Um, she was at Michigan, won a national title there, and then said, yeah. I'm good, and then came to Utah. Um, everyone talked about in the post meet that her her energy is one of the best they've ever seen. That's good. She's very good at like getting the girls hyped and excited and focused and stuff, which I think it it's really good because at times it feels like the girls will be like high and then like very low. And it's so it's good to have someone that can kind of like regulate it, I think is how I want to say. But Abby's also a national champion on vault, which has been Utah's weakest event. That's true. So to mm -hmm. have her come on in and do her thing on vault, I think it's going to be a very big boost. Um Last person I want to talk about is Crystal Issa. Obviously, she's yeah. a fan favorite. She elected to come back, back mm -hmm. elected to come back for her fifth year. So, didn't get to see her tonight. Um, she was in a boot, which is, I was told, is precautionary. Um, but we'll see her hopefully in January versus LSU, and she just adds a lot to this like beam and bars lineup, which yep. already looked really good without her. Um, yep. not to like knock on Crystal, but. <laughs> Um, it looks really good and there's only it's only gonna go up when you add crystal because she scored tens on bar or on beam and she's been very, very, very close to scoring ten on bars before. So you're just adding more depth to an already yeah. very deep squad. The fact that you can only run six gymnasts and Tom Farden goes about eight to nine deep on every single event is going to be hard to pick from. Very challenging. And yeah, you mentioned Coach, Far Coach Fardum. I mean, the program he has built is unbelievable. Go to well, and it's, not even, yeah. it's not even built. He 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 inherited a great program that was developed by yep, Greg and Megan right. Marsden, but he's yep. just kept it at that level. But he's also been re he's been recruiting a whole hell of a lot better. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that word on the <laughs> podcast, okay. but um, he's been recruiting at a higher level than Greg and Megan ever did. 
Yeah. In their next commit, like in their next signing class, Utah has three five star commits. So, like, <laughs> Utah had maybe one or two when Greg was in, like, yeah. when Megan and Greg were in charge. So, mm-hmm. like, Tom has kind of taken, like, he's figured out what, like, he needs to do to keep Utah gymnastics relevant and alive. And he's like, okay, we're going to do that, but we're going to do it to 100 million percent more. Yep. And you mentioned, too, you got three five stars coming in. And this Utah gymnastics team currently going into this season is ranked fourth as well. So it's going to be three. A they're, ranked oh, they're ranked three, three now. I saw four three. in one ranking I looked at. Okay, so, so that's so three, the yeah. three. So three is from the, the 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 WCG, which is like the like governing body for college gymnastics okay. um, until we can get into like the actual like national qualifying rankings yeah. and stuff but then there's like other little outlets called like there's one called college gymnastics news they mm. did theirs and utah came in at four gotcha. um that one i kind of hesitate a little bit with because someone had utah at like six and yeah. i was like how do you have utah at six but you have mm. other schools ahead of utah that have <laughs> less talent but whatever that's that's a story for another day we yeah. can go talk about that later, but the main takeaway for Utah gymnastics is they are in a very good place right now. They're going to continue to be in a very good place. And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch as the season gets underway. And, you know, Sammy's going to be with us to break all this great gymnastics stuff down because it's going to be a wild ride coming up. We're going to come back in and close this one out talking about a top corner recruit that Utes have a chance to land. But first I want to talk to you guys about our friends at simply safe at locked on Utes. We believe home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays this season. Give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Eats listeners 40% off a new security system. But don't put this off. Here's why I love Simply Safe. They have great tools to help you guys keep your home safe. They were named the best home security system of 2022 by us by U.S. News and World Report a third year in a row. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use FastProtect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get a higher priority police response. Simply Safe is a whole security with advanced sensors for every room, windows, and door, HD security cameras for inside and outside your home, smarter ways to detect motion that alert you when there is a real threat, and even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, or other threats to your home. Those once again, Simply Safe is here to help you guys keep your home and your family safe. Don't miss your chance to save big on my favorite security system. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college today. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Sammy, I think one thing that Utah fans are hoping that comes out of by the time that this show is either already aired, depending on when you're listening it, or just if you're listening it to the morning that we're going to find out later on Monday is if Smith Snowden, the top corner in the state of Utah, you meant you made a great point before we started recording. Utah is about to lose a top undersized corner. And if Smith commits, they're going to be getting another one. He's a guy who's been playing for Sky Ridge. He's an elite athlete. I've seen him return a 96 yard kickoff return to the house this season. Even at um, one of the state semifinals, he had an interception. He returned to the house that completely changed the game. He's just a playmaker. He's not the biggest guy, but he plays the ball extremely well for his size, an elite athlete at the corner position, and would once again just be a monster get for this Utah team as the top in-state corner. Yeah, it's it's Utah has the blueprint right now for yep. what you have with a corner. Um, you know, Clark Phillips, tech, uh-huh. it, other teams might not see him as like, he's undersized. He's 5'10", 185. Smiths around those same measurables right now yeah. might be might weigh a little less I think I'm not yeah. sure but he's around the same size as, as Clark and and look at what Clark did Clark was an AP All-American like that's yep. that's in like this that is the best recruiting Kirk tactic. Kirkstreet's defensive player of the year and yeah and that's a that's a big that's a big thing and yes. um even though he did not win the Thorpe award we're gonna yeah we're gonna just we're just gonna ignore. We're just gonna be like eh, whatever. We're used to it in Utah, but hey, all we care yeah, about that is that and the Mac Mackie Award. That so Mackie okay. Award. I know. It's about but as fired as up as I've ever gotten on this show about the Mackie Award. The so Mackie Award. That, that was <laughs> that was that was a journey. Um, but you have the prototype in Clark Phillips, mm-hmm. and I think I think Utah's corner recruiting is just gonna get better and better. Um, because you know you have Jalen Johnson, who then yep. led to Clark Phillips who hopefully will be leading to Smith Stoden, who hopefully will be leading to bigger and better. But um, it's just, it's, it's interesting because, you know, he's a legacy kid at BYU. That's the thing yeah. that I, that is, is something that people should have been like, well, then obviously he should just been a lock to BYU, but like, 
you you got to see what what Utah and other schools are doing with with corners around your same measurables and stuff. And so having Clark, I think, especially having Clark having the season he had this year, yep. is is vastly important because Utah is need, Utah needs corners heading into this like cycle. Like this is that's one of their positions of need because you're losing Clark. You lost Malone Mataele to the portal, even though he was more of like a nickel back, but he still played took reps at corner. Yep. Made plays. Um, you you have like you have you need you have a need there now because you're losing your all-american mm -hmm. so to get him as an all-american like lose an all-american and get a potential future all-american i think it's a good trade-off but um i i here's my thing i was i was at like a i was at 98 percent like he's coming to utah prior to the jay hill hire okay because jay hill coached smith's brother at weber state good point so that's the only way i'm still in the high 90s with my mm -hmm. likelihood that smith ends up wearing utah red but i'm still like there's just that little piece of my mind that's like eh, well well maybe because he has that like prior relationship with coach hill yep. like maybe this kind of shifts things in byu's way but I don't think it's going to shift BYU's way because Utah has built up so much momentum. Yeah. Um, Got to do what's best for him. Yeah. And he, I think, I think his family is going to, his family sh is going to support him in no matter what I think, because I think they just want to see him thrive and succeed. Yeah. And so that's, that's, that's a side note. But like when parents are like, well, I don't want him going there. It's like, let your kid do what they want. Like if they have like offers to schools that you don't like, but they like it, let them go, like, let them live, let them do their thing, let them experience them. And if they come back and they said, I hated it, they learned that lesson. And so I, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's just, sorry. That's like a side note. That was a tangent. Yeah. Um, no, but you're absolutely right. It's the best. It's, if it's the best opportunity for him, he should absolutely take it. And if you look at what yeah. Utah has produced in terms of successful corners, how they've helped develop them, the opportunities they've given for guys, his goal, Smith's goal is to play in the NFL. If you look at then the level that Utah. Utah yeah, and if you look at the Utah, Utah DB success versus we're talking about BYU, let's look at the recent BYU success. It's not even a competition. It's mm -hmm. Utah all the way right now. So if you're looking for development from that standpoint, you're choosing Utah yeah. if you are a recruit in that position. Sharif Shaw is a fantastic coach. Yes. I don't think I think I think that that's something that gets like not acknowledged as much. Yes. Um, because there's people who say like, well, the only reason why Clark is so good is because Clark had those talents before coming to Utah. I have seen Sharif and College Clark yeah. okay. post practice for well we're well we're all waiting for media to get in like waiting for coaches and players them working on stuff together for 30 45 yeah. an hour. I've seen the two of them working together. And yeah. like Sharif has also commended Clark on his ability. Like Clark is yeah. the first one in the weight room and he is the last one to leave the film room. Like Clark is a student of the game. Yeah. And so I think you need to you need to give Sharif Shaw some credit too because also Absolutely. if you look at what he's done with like Zamaya Vaughn, mm -hmm. who has been one of my favorite players to watch this year, what he's done with him, what he's done with Fabian Marks, what he's done with a bunch of other guys, like you got to see what he's doing. Like it's a pattern. Talent, talent can only get you so far. That's mm -hmm. my thing. Is like you yep. still need to be developed. You still need to be pushed. You still need to be tried hard and like all of these things. And Sharif is one of those perfect coaches to do that. And so I just. I love Sharif. I've yeah. always loved him. Like he's just a great guy and everything, but you, you have a fantastic cornerback coach that you're yes. going to be playing with. If you are a corner commit at the university of Utah future. Yeah. Defensive coordinator. I feel like at some point, yeah, I, not, I have not, a feeling not. it's everyone's coming. So. Yeah, definitely. feels like it is. And you just mentioned it there for people who want to be like, well, how much of it is Clark who Clark deserves a lot of the credit, but so does coach Shaw because is Clark the aberration? Is he the only good corner on Utah? No, no. it's all of them who have been yeah. developed and also maximized to the best abilities and have put in the time and worked. And part of the process of putting in that time and work is having instilled in you what it takes to be successful, which we know coach Sean is able to do. So he is a fantastic coach. And I love that. We're just like, this is Smith. Snowden, just listen to us talk about Coach Sean. Smith Snowden, I can why. convince you yeah. myself on yes. why you should go play at the <laughs> University of Utah. That's what this is. This is what this this is turned into. Yes, but I, you know, and I think, I think if Utah gets him, like this is probably going to be the. It already is looking to be the highest rated yeah. recruiting class in Utah oh, yeah. football history. Like you're already in the twenty, you're in the top twenty five already. Crazy. But 
I think if you can get Smith Snowden and then there's some other guys that Utah's think like trying to get AKA uh, Walker Lions, um, <laughs> the tight end out of California yes. that everyone loves. Mm-hmm. Um, you, if you can get Smith and Walker, you, you, this is the best recruiting class Utah's ever seen. Mm-hmm. And if you get, if you get Smith and you don't get Walker, like, you're still you're getting right. <laughs> you're still getting a really good class right. and you're still getting a really good tight end. You're getting K- CJ Jacobson from Idaho. He's yeah. a really good tight yes. end. And like sorry, I should have brought this up when we were talking about Fano, but like Utah went 3 for 3 with their their all- offensive line targets this season, which I yeah. think is something that has gone unrecognized that needs mm-hmm. to be acknowledged. You got Caleb Lomu, you got Spencer Fano, and you got Roger Alderman. Like you got you were 3 for 3 on your offensive tackle targets and your offensive line targets for the entire for the entire cycle. Yes. That's huge. Incredible. That is that is ma- if we're talking about coaches who deserve credit, credit to coach Harding. Like that is yeah. Am- amazing that he was and able Brian to Brian Brown stand up. He was on coach Hardy's t- train all the way and he called it and he, man, he couldn't have been more right too. With well, yeah, well, we, we, we stand Brian, but yeah. um, <laughs> always, but that's, that's a big, like Utah's coaches are recruiting at such a high level right now that I think they're at the point now where they're having to say no to kids. Yeah. That's where I think where with where the portal stands. That's where I think a lot of things stand with Utah football right now is because Utah's on that that level now where they can be like they can be somewhat they can be picky is the word that I'm I'm using and I know that's kind of a weird word to use in this mm-hmm. situation, but like they can use they can be picky and of who they want to bring into this program. Yeah. It's not like back in the day when we we're like we need a tight end. Or like yeah. we need offensive linemen. So the first guy we find that like fits into the scheme, we're gonna take. Like, no, Utah's at the point now where they can kind of sift through the options and see who who is going to be the one that fits best in with not only the culture, yeah. but also the schemes. Utah football is definitely in a great position because of the recruiting success they've been able to have. It's bas- I mean, successful recruiting is basically the theme of this episode. We've spent all this time talking about Utah gymnastics, all the five stars they've landed. Utah football coming off just an incredible week of a, as a program, too. It's, mm-hmm. it's always great to be a Ute, but, man, these past couple of weeks, it's been even better, it feels like. Yeah, ever since that Pac-12, that, like, Thursday night at the Pac-12 championship game when Mikey Matthews committed yep. through, like, today, which I'm assuming is Monday. Yes, it is. It's been pretty good. Hopefully be- Monday night is also yeah. good. Uh, <laughs> um, and then we'll get we'll be on riding that high heading into signing day on the 21st. And then we'll be riding that high even more because we're post signing day heading into the Rose Bowl. Hey. And then hopefully we win the Rose Bowl and then we're on a post Rose Bowl win high. And then we have the February signing day and then we're on another high. And it's just uh-huh. it's just a cycle, you know. It's awesome. So. It really is a great cycle. And you even mentioned just tickets sticking with the high. Then Utah gymnastics is well underway too. And yeah. they'll have a to win a national championship. So it's going to be January a lot of fun. 7th. January yes, 7th. Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun to follow it all along. Just like it's always fun having you on, Sammy. Appreciate you joining us. And Sammy Thank mentioned you. it too. We have Utah signing day just a week away from today's show. So make sure you guys keep it here at Locked On Utes because all week long, we're going to be talking about the great players that the Utes have been able to bring in that are going to officially sign, as well as a couple other ones that are going to end up signing later on. So make sure you guys keep it here at Locked On Utes, as well as if you're in the market for a second listen every day, make sure you guys check out Locked On Sports today. The biggest game recaps, the biggest stories in sports. It's all available on Locked On Sports today, available on Odyssey, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Once again, thanks to Sammy Moore of Ute Zone for joining us. Sammy, what kind of stuff do you have coming up with Ute Zone? Um, lots of gymnastics, lots of football. Um, our weekly podcast in the zone for VIP subscribers. Mm-hmm. Come on over, become a subscriber at Ute Zone. Um, it's a great place to be connect with other Utah fans and get some mm-hmm. good information about football, basketball, gymnastics, whatever you want. So, yep. yeah. Very good point. All right. Make sure you guys check out all that great stuff that Sammy's coming up and keep it here at Locked On Use. And we're going to have a great week and have a great Monday.